Hello and welcome to The Main Cave. Now in today's video, we are venturing outside and into the car as I take a look at this, the standalone CarPlay screen from CarPuride, the AW903, and see if it can stack up against an inbuilt system, namely the one in my Land Rover. Now this whole unit here can have the best features, the best screen and controls, but it will live and die by its usability and whether or not it lags and is unusable. If it isn't responsive, then it was just gonna get binned. So today I'm going to show you what you get, how to install it, what it does, but mainly its usability, and if it's a decent alternative to an inbuilt CarPlay system. So here we go, then and in the box you get yourself a screen itself, two mounting brackets, one more adjustable than the other, and a plethora of sticky pads to be able to mount the screen to your dash. You also get a manual and a cigarette lighter to USB-C cable. Now I've used one of these sticky pads already and I've had it on there a few days before successfully taking it off without leaving any residue, so that's good. So once out and turned on, you'll notice the screen itself. It's fantastic. It's bright with auto and manual adjustment. It's colorful, it's sharp, and a visible area of around 20 centimeters by eight centimeters. It has a very good screen real estate. Now around the back to the side are the four ports, one for the 3.5 millimeter audio out, an SD card slot, an AV in and the USB-C for power. Now, as I said before, you do get a cigarette lighter to USB-C cable included, but for me, I just swapped it for a general USB-C to USB-C cable so that I could power it from my car's USB port. But you don't get a USB-C cable in the box. So once all out, then the process to get it working is dead easy. You just turn it on, go to the phone's Bluetooth and connect it. It literally takes seconds. Then once that's done, the screen will fire up. And in this case, with my iPhone, up onto CarPlay. With the CarPuride, you get a decent amount of features through CarPlay with everything you can expect from the CarPlay device you have. Musics, podcasts, maps, pretty much everything that you'd expect. The main menu on the screen gives you the option to do various things such as audio and video, which is not available using CarPlay. The volume, brightness, etc. And then down the bottom here is another feature I've touched upon and that's the dash cam. So this is a physical camera attached to the screen, which seems to be pretty much recording all the time and records with the SD card, which comes included and is installed around the back. The camera has some physical adjustments up and down around three and a half to four centimeters and a swivel so you can get it to a good angle. To activate the camera, you just press the camera icon or if you're in CarPlay, the white settings button and then the camera icon. The camera is very good quality with a choice of 720, 1080 or 2.5K and a great wide angle and a quick tap of the screen gets you a few menu options to recording a photo, turning the mic on and off and to swap or include a second camera which can be added using the rear AV input port we talked about earlier. Now how about getting the sound out of it? Well, you have a few options really. You can use the inbuilt speaker, which, which isn't great to be honest, but it's perfectly usable. Or you can use it as an FM transmitter, so just tune your car into the FM frequency shown on the screen. Or you can use a physical connection using the aux port on the rear. Just depends on what your car has available. So, so far so good. So let's move on to what I believe the most important part. And that's what I said at the beginning. This will live and die by the fact of its responsiveness of the screen. So what about the car puree then? Well, it's good. The touches and the clicks are instant. The menu reacts perfect with swapping screens exactly how you'd want it. In terms of CarPlay, it's good enough and about what you'd expect from any CarPlay. As you can see, Google Maps is a touch laggy, but Apple Maps is much more responsive, which I would expect. Having said that, it's still very usable. All in all, the screen is exactly what I'd expect. I didn't have any problems at all using it. I will never get frustrated with it being laggy at all. Very impressed. So overall, my experience in the past few weeks of using this have been great. I'd 100% be happy to use this if I didn't have native CarPlay in my car. It looks good, it's responsive, it has a ton of features, the camera's a nice addition. Overall, it's a cracking product. So there it was then, that was my quick look at the CarPuride W903. I'll leave links down below where you can get this. Please like, please subscribe, until the next video. Bye-bye.